Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Getting Creative With, the show where AADL staff engage with an arbitrarily chosen topic to stay playful, stay inspired, and creative. My name is Ksenia, and with me today are AADL staff members, Christopher, Stephanie, Heidi, Aurora, and Mackenzie. And this week's theme is worn. It is the past tense of a verb, a descriptive word, possibly. I don't know. Who knows? But you who have engaged with the theme. So, Christopher, what do you have for us today? Hello. I have been sitting on lots and lots of old T-shirts. Some of them are hard to believe, 35 years old. Um, so I decided to start kind of making a quilt out of them. It's not actually a quilt, it's just a quilt-like design. So here's the very beginning. And um, there, uh, each of these shirts has a lot of memories attached, a place that I was living, a time of my life, um, lots and lots of memories. So I'll just be brief and say, this involved so much learning for me. Uh, I'm glad that Heidi's on the show today because she remembers me uh, fumbling my way through easy sewing. So this uh, represented a much further advance in my sewing skills, I'm happy to say. But trying to figure out how to sew the backs of everything with the seams and then flip everything around and anyway, uh, many, many times I had to take the pins out and start all over again. Uh, and this is, uh, this is my start on that project. So I had a lot of fun and really learned a lot. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> I have so many questions. So you're doing this by hand, hand sewing, not a machine. That's right. Okay. Wow. Was this very emotional because you're taking old memories and you're cutting them up, putting it together partially screwing it up and having to take it apart, <laughs> worrying that you've totally trashed it. I mean, like what, how did yes. that go? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, the fact that I'm sitting on all of these t-shirts that are so threadbare, they're all, they're in rags. Some of the clothes I pulled out, I was embarrassed at. They're ripped up, filthy, stained. I'm like, what am I doing sitting on all these things? So this represents a kind of, uh, resurrection and a kind of new life for all of these memories that get will be put to some decorative or uh, practical use. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, it was a lot of learning and it was fun. What was the most difficult part for you about the, uh, the hand sewing? Oh, figuring out to flip I mean, you kind of have to uh, think in a mirror fashion and then you put the two layers together, sew through and then flip it up, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So I had to really think about that and then I use a Posca marker to get the same shape for everyone. And then you get to a corner, God forbid, and then it's just a mess. You've got even, uh, you know, all these loose ends of other pieces of fabric hanging out, blocking your view of everything. <laughs> and so the key is take your time. Mm -hmm. so. I think that's a really great use of these, you know, emotional, uh, sentimental things that you have lying around. I, I also have a lot of t-shirts lying around that what do you do with them if, you know, they're not wearable any longer, but they still have that sentimentality to them? Right. Better this than in a bag in the basement where they've been for a long time. Right. <laughs> Sounds like my basement. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen really cool ideas too with like making a rag rug and things of that nature, like little pillows and pin cushions. But yeah. Right. It's, it's really neat that you're not only, I don't know, you're, you're cutting up the, the um, pieces and parts of your past and like stitching them back together, but that you're doing them by hand is even like that, that tactile work is so, I don't know, it's, it's got a lot more um, intensity than like machine work maybe. Right. But, um, 
would you do this with the machine or do you would do you prefer the hand sewing oh i've never used a machine and um that scares me i'm barely getting my head around hand sewing <laughs> So this will be good for now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I wish you very, very much luck on uh, and and steady hands on your your future endeavors in completing that project. That's very, very cool. <laughs> I just had one more question. Are you going to use this as a blanket then, or are you going to like hang it on the wall? I was thinking about putting it on the wall behind me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because I have a lot, I have a huge pile of these rough squares to put together. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, kind of a, a flag or a pendant. Mm -hmm. It so, wouldn't last long as a pillow case. So, do you, when you look at it, each design, did you just kind of cut a square out of it, or did you like look at the design of each shirt and then like? determine how you cut it or maybe because the stain or whatever that you cut not the, keep the dirty part or whatever you make the determination how you make it um yeah it i use. i started with a kind of a smallish piece of cardboard from a notepad and a lot of t-shirt designs are a much much larger than that so i kind of had to decide you know, where I was going to cut it, like for the Green Apple bookstore, you know, this is uh, an unfinished edge. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to lose a lot of, a lot of that head right there, you know. Um, Design decisions, they are. <laughs> Have you been using thimbles? No. <laughs> <laughs> someday i'll graduate to that yeah you have to draw blood with any good crafting experience oh yeah <laughs> every every craft needs blood sweat and tears they're real workplace hazards you guys <laughs> nice cool all right well steph hey there Hey, what you got for us today? So, I actually did make a rag rug. Um, I started to. It's uh, apparently uh, a lot more time consuming than I thought it would be. So this is the start of my rag rug. Um, kind of uh, messy, but this took maybe ten hours. <laughs> It was a lot of figuring out what I was doing and I followed a YouTube tutorial. Um, but a lot of the rag rugs I saw were um, <clears throat> involved sewing and I don't sew. Um, so this had very minimal sewing and it's all hidden. Um, so it's basically, um, you have four pieces. You start with three pieces and you braid it. And then, um, and then you incorporate a fourth piece and you weave it in. Um, so it's, you know, one piece goes uh, under, over, then under, then through. Um, and I had to write that down because I kept forgetting. But um, yeah, that's my rag rug. So there's, there's no structure underneath? Like it's not a weaving into which you work the material. It's just all braiding and um, switchbacks, basically? Yeah. So the very center of this is, um, so right in here, which you can't even tell, is a braid where you take pieces and you braid it together and then you start um you incorporate a fourth piece and then you just weave it into that mm -hmm. okay. wow cool and the the minimal sewing is that when you do the braid you do sew the very ends of the braid so it doesn't come untangled mm -hmm. did you cut rags into strips for it yeah i have um like this, it doesn't really matter if they're kind of raggedy or the same size or anything. So maybe about an inch and a half, two inches wide. Mm -hmm. um, but we recently cleaned out our closets and found a lot of clothes that are not really wearable anymore that I've been keeping around. But these ones don't have really any sentimental attachment 
for me. They're just rags at this point. So, so, so it's like, oh, sorry, Christopher. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, well, so it's like a freehand weaving and um, does it just, so you're working from the center out, does it start to become like a bigger rectangle or do you yeah. just, does it get wider? Like, yeah. And so at this point here, I don't know if you can tell where it's kind of gotten wider um, on the screen, but this is one row and then it's going to continue up here. Mm -hmm. um, so that it'll just keep getting more, more wide. It'll keep getting wider and um, I think we'll be an oval in the end. I'm not entirely sure if there's any way to make a square rag rug. But. Okay. So obviously there's a way to uh, incorporate a new rag when you run out, you know, do you just tie it together? Yeah, so the way that it works is you take, um, and you can't have very long pieces on this because you're pulling through the entire piece each time. Um, it was one of the ones I saw online that involved more sewing, involved making a whole big ball of yarn um, out of the rag and this that would not work with this because you'd have to pull through the whole ball each time. Um, so you take the end piece and you cut a little uh, slit through it. And then the piece that you want to incorporate, uh, you, one of the ends you cut a slit through and then you feed it through that hole that's on the attached piece feed it through the hole that's on the, the piece that you want. And then it just makes like kind of a slip knot. And then this would be the on the attached piece and it would just cinch tight like that. That's great. So it's, it's making a tiny little knot and it is a little bit difficult to pull the knot through, but um, you don't have to pull out the needle and thread. So. Do you use any kind of hook, crochet hook, to help work it through, or just your fingers? I have been using um, this big, it's an eye um, hook to pull it through. Um, the tutorial I followed um, recommended you attach a metal tapestry needle to the end instead, or a safety pin. Mm -hmm. um, to use that sort of as a, a needle to pull it through. Um, but I only have plastic tapestry needles, which she said would break with this. Um, and all of my um, safety pins are decorative safety pins that have little cat heads on them. Um, <laughs> that wouldn't work. So yeah, I've just been using the hook. It works okay. I think it would probably be faster if you had the tapestry needles. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's so approachable though, like even just being able to weave it through itself to create a connection point or an anchor point. That's, um, because from from here, from the uh, the far away perspective that I have, it looks really, really complicated. Because when you pull it out, I'm like, oh, God, it's another crochet project. Dang it. Why don't I know crochet? It's so beautiful. <laughs> but um, I really appreciate how, how approachable that is um, for someone who is uncoordinated with needles like me um, or hooks. Yeah. And the good thing about it is, like, if you look closely at it, there's all of these, like, little pieces sticking out, like, there. And it just doesn't matter. Like, yeah. there's a here that's like probably not great maybe you could sew that together if you cared but like it's a rug you're gonna step on it so I don't know to me there's a lot of things I when I do crochet work especially I want it to be exactly right and I want it to be I'm a little bit of, too much of a perfectionist but with this I'm like hey, it's a rug it's fine mm -hmm. what it is mm -hmm. and that was just really freeing so how how big do you plan or hope for this object to end up being? Um, I don't know. Like a bath mat, maybe, or uh, <laughs> bigger. Maybe I don't know. So this is the. I mean, it's the right length. Obviously, it'll get a little bit longer, but it's mainly growing on the the width side. Um, but maybe that big. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I mean, like, do you know where you're going to put it in your house or where you're going to use it yet? Um, maybe in the hallway. Cause my dog, um, she has, she's got so much fur and it grows so much on her pads and her paws that she slips around all the time. So if I could get like one of those, um, they make these kind of like jelly mats to put under a rug. Mm -hmm. Rug sticks to the floor a little bit better. Maybe she'd appreciate having more than just wood flooring. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> and probably somewhere in the hallway so she can have a little bit more traction. And um, regarding the color choices that you're making, like, are you pretty much out or almost out of the, or will you run out of the colors that you have been using so far? And are you going to try to hunt up the, the um, colors that are similar to it? Or are you just kind of like, yeah, it's a rug. I'm just going to go with it. Um, I, so it's kind of a unique green and yellow in there. And I don't, um, I've got like half of this shirt left, the green shirt and the yellow is a, uh, an infinity scarf that I chopped up. Uh -huh. um, and I've got about half of that left as well. But once those run out, I don't have those colors anymore. But the black and white, I can find other black and white um, right. laying around. But um, yeah, I think that it'll be fine to find um, other complementary colors mm -hmm. and create those. Um, I've got a red shirt that my husband threw out that I can chop up, I think would look nice in it. So nice. I think it'll be cool to see, you know, the different colors as it goes out. Mm -hmm. Cool. Alrighty. Well, thanks for that stuff. I'm excited to see how, like, where, where that goes, but wow, that's really beautiful. And yes, it doesn't involve crochet. I don't have yes. any, either, <laughs> but you know, don't know it. <laughs> it was tempting to do a crochet project. But... Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, cool. Well, Heidi, hey there. Hey. <laughs> What have you done this week? So um, I was, uh, okay, I wanted to add something to a dress that I've worn. It's a dress I bought and it was like this, it was seriously purple and I loved it. But then I was like, it's too purple. So I had like done a bleach kind of tie dye to get rid of some of that. And it turned into this more fuchsia. I don't, it always felt like it needed something more design wise, like maybe around the hem and I was like, do I block print? What am I going to do? So I just recently did an embroidery challenge and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take the stitch. It's called the plain chain, which I fell in love with. And I'm going to add that on this dress. So I did some stitching. Um, so this is upside down, I guess. doesn't really matter though. So this is the hem of the dress and I have stitched these uh, circles kind of, well, kind of a labyrinth because it goes in and then goes out and then just kind of keeps going along. And I got about four and a half of them done in about a week because I was really working at it because I was like, I'm going to try and get this done for the, <laughs> in time for the program. So um, normally I don't work that quickly. So that's been a good thing. And um, I do want to wear the dress though. So I'm hoping I can, you know, keep at it and get, get this thing finished maybe by the end of the week. Um, I think each circle takes me about three hours to stitch. So, mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of freehanding it, but hoping that the layout, like I tried to measure it out um, so that I would have five circles on each front and back. Um, I don't trust in fabric markers or fabric marking tools. Like I'm always worried that the marker's not gonna wash out fully or sometimes even the heat sensitive ones, I'm just like, I just don't trust it. So <laughs> it would be much easier if I had a pattern just drawn on there, but mm -hmm. I just kind of draw it a little bit with a colored pencil, which starts to wear away. So I'm just guessing at where I'm stitching. Mm -hmm. so it's been, wow. <laughs> yeah. You have an amazing eye to be able to do that. I would think something so so geometric is uh, yeah really hard to gauge, but it, they look so even. I'm really jealous. <laughs> it's funny because a lot of them they're so wonky, but I'm just like I'm just keep going. And the thing is with this kind of material because it's it's like a knit a cotton knit. Mm -hmm. um, once you poke the needle through, it creates a hole. So if I've had to undo stitches, I really just had to reuse those holes. You like you can't. Like I had a tangle with a thread and I didn't realize it had happened. So I had to go back and, and take some of them out. But um, yeah, so there's well, a lot of times with my projects, I tend to have a habit of taking things apart as part of my process of getting to the finish, but I can't do that with this. Mm -hmm. So I just got to keep going. Wow. <laughs> and that's all hand sewed as well? Hand -sewed? Yeah. Wow. And I, I want to show the back because I'm proud that like it doesn't look too messy on the back side. Oh my God. Yeah. 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 So. That's amazing. I feel like I, I waste like half of my embroidery thread when I embroider something because I'm just like, I have snags and pulls in the back. So yeah. you find that to be pretty easy with the the, the knit to um, not have to do or what what 
honestly, yeah, what do you do to like prevent that kind of stuff from happening? Because I'm terrible at it. It just happens. Like as you pull your thread in and out, it starts to create twists in it. And so that's why it'll like, it curls up on itself. So I don't think it's so much the fabric, it's just like the thread that it, it so that it happens. Um, so sometimes you have to like, you know, you have your in a hoop and you just kind of let it dangle and like let the thread dangle and it'll untwist. Oh, I'm okay. using a, what is actually technically a crochet thread because I wanted to have something, I didn't want to have to go buy anything. So I was like, I have this, it's, it's kind of a heavy weight. I'm not sure what size technically this is, mm -hmm. but um, anyway, it is a real difficult mm -hmm. <laughs> thread to be working with because it twists up on itself a lot. So I'm, I'm constantly trying to untangle it as, it as it's being pulled through. Sometimes kind of have to hold it with your fingers as it goes through to help guide it so it can't get up on itself, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. It's really, really cool. Really I love your color choices. Well, thank you. Yeah, that, uh, that purple on like the, the muted magenta is a very nice contrast. Thanks. Yeah, I was... It was tough. To, I, was, I was happy to have something because otherwise it was going to be like I had a navy that would have maybe been okay, but I didn't want to just use black. So, yeah. Mm. Heidi, did you consider different colors for each of the different whorls? I did. I originally started off with like I have a range of pinks and some purples. And even as I was stitching it, I was going to, I just kind of kept changing color. But then I worried I was going to run out. Of a lot of those and I didn't again didn't want to have to go out and get anything so I that was the one time where I picked everything out and that but it was in the early stages so it was like it was okay I didn't have a lot to pick out and then I just decided it looked better having just the one color because there's enough going on with like the tie-dye kind of look of the material so yeah I didn't want to get too wild and I, you know I didn't think I could carry off too much garishness right <laughs> So fun. And again, I really just appreciate how approachable that is. I think often we see things in art supply stores and craft stores that say specifically what an item is for, like embroidery floss or embroidery thread or, you know, a, a crochet yarn. And we're just like, okay, I need to have this material to complete this project. And I just really appreciate how, um, yeah, how, how allowing what you're doing is mm. um, to sort of use up the stuff that you have and make it pretty. <laughs> yeah. Um, all righty. Well, then who do we have next? Oh, it's me. That's why I'm wondering. <laughs> um, so I went along sort of a, um, a similar, a similar vein in that I took something that I have worn before and it is this, this wonderful sort of, um, what I think is wonderful floral, um, fabric, it's just cotton, plain fabric. Um, and because I continue to be a glutton for punishment, I was like, why don't I try origami again? Just why not with fabric? <laughs> and so I used a fabric stiffener. Uh, it's like a, a polymer based fabric stiffener to, well, make the fabric stiffer and covered it, soaked it, laid it out flat, let it dry. And it became this really gross kind of crinkly, but substantially structurally sound piece of material that behaves a lot like paper. Um, and then I took an iron out and because it's a polymer, uh, it softens up and is kind of reconstituted um, when heat is applied. So it softens up and able to work it like paper. So I made an origami bow um, and I just played around with it some more and I made a little a crane, a couple of cranes that um, can like sit up by themselves, which to me is an accomplishment. Um, and what was great about this is that when I work a piece of paper into a form, I have to unfold and refold so much that it just ends up resembling a crumpled piece of paper and not the object that I was intending to make. But all I had to do to remove the creases was get my iron out and uh, lay a piece of parchment paper on top of what I was folding and just iron out the creases I didn't want. So I could unfold it and recrease as much as I wanted and it would become as soft and as workable as this fabric. Um, and as it cooled off, 
it just dried hard and it retained its integrity. So now I just have these like paper looking fabric materials um, or fabric cranes, lawns. I don't know what they are. They're birds. And I'm looking forward to trying some more. It was actually just, yeah, it was, I don't know, to me really, really satisfying to see something like folded and pretty because I can never do that. <laughs> so that was my, my little project this week. I mean, I think that's really impressive. It's hard enough making a crane out of paper. <laughs> I, I, an unusual material there. <laughs> but, How hard was it to fold? It was, you know, after it dried and after I, um, after I flattened it out really well, all I had to do was just, you know, make it even. I, all I had to do was just crease it with an iron. Um, so the iron added the heat and the weight that my hands lack with paper. And it really wasn't that bad. So I think the hardest part for me was making the paper or the material a square shape um, because that's the base onto which you're folding the um, item. So it wasn't that bad because I had the iron. Isn't the material too thick sometimes to like make bends in it or, you know, multiple folds or I, not? You know, I, it's, it's really not, it is actually paper thin and I'll show you like this little butt end right there. It is legitimately paper thin and I had to make three folds along here where it is three layers thick um, on each side. And it wasn't, yeah, it, it was fine as long okay. as I like, crease it with my fingers and then just press it, it stayed. Um, that was, yeah, what was so great about working with the stiffener. Um, so, wow. Yeah, it's nice. Is it hard to cut? If you make your fabric first with iron with the backing, did you then cut a square or did you already cut the fabric, then put the backing on it, so then fold? Oh, there's no backing. It's just, it's like this, this gluey kind of fluid oh. that I soaked it in. Um, but yeah, I, I cut them up into rough-ish square and rectangular shapes. And um, then I soaked it and then I laid it out to dry and then I ironed it. So it was, it was a process, but these are the kinds of projects I like. It's ones that really involve kind of um, the, the need to really draw the uh, your actions to its logical conclusion so it was really intentional and i'm very much motivated by that so that was good <laughs> was this a like so did you use paper mache glue like the glue you use for paper mache is, is that what you use for soaking it, it it um let me let me check the brand real quick um I got it at Share House. <laughs> it was just like randomly there on the shelf, even though I didn't really realize what I was looking for. Aleen's A L E E N E apostrophe S fabric stiffener liquid. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so and then what I, did you set it on to dry so that? Yeah, I just um, I set it on wax paper to dry, okay. and then I removed it, put it on a piece of cardboard after it dried, and for my my barrier to the iron, I used parchment paper um because you know it wax does terrible things to your iron um but yeah that was that was just it. so the stiffener is actually used for things like wreaths and hardening uh bows making decor out of it so i'm like oh okay well if you can make organic shapes maybe i can make geometric shapes out of it so is it a starch it's i think it's a glue uh a glue type. I think okay. it's a glue and a starch mixture. Mm -hmm. um, there, I, I could not make it myself, even though I tried. I have some splotchy fabric to prove it, but <laughs> um, this dried clear and without any. Dirt. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Um, I think it's waterproof, so I might have to simulate that later. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm. I'm actually. I'm actually looking forward to making more origami shapes, which is strange for me. So it is yeah, time consuming because you have to heat it, press it, wait for it to cool a little bit, warm it, do it, you know. So it's just a whole, a whole thing. But I would totally do it again. Anyhow, um, all right, Aurora, what did you make with this particular subject? 
period. Well, I thought about the same way as um, Christopher and um, Stephanie, t-shirts worn, except my um, project is a little bit more practical. Mm -hmm. um, I took a t-shirt and then um, actually I did two things, but this is the t-shirt. I did from the bottom up um, using the, the trim set of your t-shirt bottom as mm -hmm. a handle. And then I did sew it like Christopher said, back and front, two ways to make sure that it doesn't come out. But I also cut the slit on the t-shirt to make into a bag because I feel like a lot of time you have so many t-shirts laying around after so many use and I want to give it um, something useful. So I want to make into like a grocery bag that you could carry around and, you know, carry your stuff. And my other one I did was not a t-shirt, but it's just a fabric that, um, that anything that you want that you don't use. Um, I thought with the winter time, um, I make a dog stoppers drift with the, the long fabric and put some the fillings and put some bean from last week program to put some weight on it. So, so I put it on my um, French doors to keep the draft coming in. So that is my practical project of this week. So. So how much does the bag hold? Also, I love that color. <laughs> it's actually one of, yeah, one of those t-shirts. You can see this is upside down because the shirt is upside down. And um, I don't know, it holds a lot. I think yeah. it could hold a lot. Um, I did have to sew the bottom and the side just mm -hmm. to make sure it holds. Yeah. Stuff. But it's pretty sturdy. Mm -hmm. Did you do any uh, treatments to the, like the holes so they don't fray? No, actually, they pretty. I did cut it slit, and they seem to hold pretty mm -hmm. well. Okay. So I didn't have to do too much anything. Are the holes just to make it lighter? I think it just allowed to stretch. Stretch, yeah. yeah. I, that's what I meant, actually. <laughs> So I think it's just so that it could put more stuff in it because otherwise, um, and also make it look a little bit more like a bag, you know, see what's inside. Interesting. Okay. So did you do a reinforcing stitch at all around the handles? I know you didn't do anything around the holes, but are they holding up pretty well? I did because when I did the first, I didn't think it, it, it held on to the weight. Um, I took the sleeve the coupling of it, I cut it, and I did add it an extra strip. So you could see there's two strips to it so that it's more sturdy on the handle because yeah, I was concerned about that when I was making that. I was worried that this thing won't hold up, but I did add that. Neat, okay. For the door stopper, did you, um, or draft blocker, um, did you fill it entirely with beans or is there like polyfill in there as well? It's a mixture of polyfill and bean. So the okay. bean is the way to down and the polyfill is to just to stop the air coming in. Okay, cool. What fabric is oh, what fabric is that from Aurora? This is from a cotton um, dress that I have. It's a brown that I didn't like to wear anymore. So I just cut the strip of it long and sew it and put it. Okay. Have you taken it out for a spin yet? The uh, the bag, not the door stopper. The but the door stopper has been in my French door for a couple of days already. Um, no, I have not taken the bag to for shopping yet. No. Mm -hmm. Cool. And so, have you found the draft blocker to be pretty effective? Because I've wondered about those before. I'm like, and I, you know, lived in Florida for 20 years, so I'm like, do I need that? <laughs> yeah, I find it pretty effective because a lot of time you don't notice it until at nighttime and then when you walk by like my French doors because it has so much glass and um, when you walk by you really feel kind of drafty mm -hmm. and I think that helps and also of course if you have curtain it helps too in the okay. winter time so 
Good to know. I'm taking very practical notes right now. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> well, I just thought that winter time, you know, people wanted to put films on their windows to so that less draft. So you try to put more stuff to help your house to keep warm. In the yeah. Uh, that's really cool. All right. Neat. Um, cool. Well, yeah, I've, I've seen like ones that, that look like, like wiener dogs and like caterpillars and things like that. I thought those were really, really funny. But. I, I saw some lady did, um, old socks. You, you know, you guys did the socks yeah. over, and they, she did that using old socks and make into a, a stoppers yeah. too. I um, still have so many socks left over. So that's, this is good to know. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, thank you for that. Sorry. Um, all right, Mackie. Hey. All right. I did something a little different. So I, let me see if I can hold it correctly. I made a poncho. I think I have to stand back. So it can be seen a little bit better. The picture looks nicer than what it looks like in the video right now. Is it a scalloped edge? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's laced edge poncho. Oh. So I can pull that forward. Oh, wow. Oh, it's really pretty. Is that crochet? Yep, it's crochet. Oh. Cool. Cool. I think I'm working on a pattern that's almost like that might be the same pattern. <laughs> like I, I don't have, know. Does <laughs> it use the, it. does it use herringbone half double crochet? It does. Because <laughs> <laughs> of, of the buttons along the side. I was like, that yep. looks really, fun. oh my gosh, I have never gotten, I have, I have so much to do on mine. How long did the, that take Okay, you? it took me 12 hours. Oh. about and it I had to stop every few rows because the, doing the something about that stitch and I'm going to repeat it is the herringbone half double crochet it's a mouthful <laughs> um, it started to make my hand cramp in a weird way just the way I had to hold the string and how to manipulate it it really hurt and my gauge is a little off for it. So it says in the pattern, it says you have to go 45 rows and it will be 16 and a half inches. Well, the stitch width is correct. So I'm like correct width, but uh, the row height is wrong. So I, when I hit 45 rows, it was 11 inches. <laughs> so it ended up doing about 12 more rows to get five and a half more inches. <laughs> Yeah, you know, gauge, yeah. age, I, you know. I, I, I thought I it was pretty close with the gauge. <laughs> well, when, when I tested for gauge, I thought it was pretty spot on, but I just couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong with my rows. But yeah. You know, I feel like it is what happens. Like you'll do a swatch and then as you're working, it just, your tension or something, something about it changes. Mm -hmm. So that was understandable. It looks great though. And I love that color. It's really. Yep. It's a, it's going to be a Christmas present and I know I have relatives who watch the show, so I'm not going to say who it's for. Oh. <laughs> Mysterious. I'm really re-inspired to, to work on mine. <laughs> it's the, and the lace, the lace portion of it is actually not super hard. Mm. The, the hard part was when I was going up on like after making it and doing this scalloped edge of it, that was the hard part because it's hard to tell the rows apart. Mm. I was having difficulty figuring out which one was a separate row, which was a half of a row, and you need to do it. You need to put this the scallop every four rows, and that was the difficult part. Your precision is amazing to me. I mean, just, it looks so effortlessly done, like with the scallops and like the rounded edge. I just, I know it took a ton of work. It just, I can't wrap my mind around it, but it's, it's really beautiful. <laughs> wow. 
I'd like to say I have reached a point where I'm not a beginner anymore. So, so some of these patterns I come up with and I find I'm like, I can do this. So I'm, I'm, I'm a safe intermediate stage now that I can be a bit more confident in saying, yeah, that was easy. <laughs> That's really empowering. And how long have you been doing it? How many projects? Um, I've been crocheting on and off for a few years. Mm -hmm. I did a couple big projects my last year of college, like three or four years ago, and then kind of tapered off and then picked it back up. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, teaching my friend. Oh, that's my dog. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah. I, we I'm... call it, my friend calls it witchcraft, which is great. <laughs> it's comparable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to ask, are the buttons on there purely decorative or are they? They're decorative. Oh, okay. They're completely decorative. I, I made a, um, I crocheted a, like a headband ear warmer thing um, that had buttonholes um, recently. And that was really hard. And I had to undo the buttonholes multiple times to actually get the fit in the hole. Um, yeah, this is how it's sewn on. I was lazy and didn't do them individually, but like the red, bright red string mm -hmm. is a metallic mm -hmm. red I used to sew the buttons down so you can kind of see it from there. So yeah, just I mean, they're string. super cute. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. That's, that's gorgeous. I have no other words, but that's just gorgeous. <laughs> I'm yeah. very proud of it. It's my first foray into clothing. I'm going to learn how to do some socks next. <laughs> I once tried to make a sweater, but that is my only foray into, uh, I made half of a sweater one time and that's my, my mm -hmm. wear for crochet. Mm -hmm. uh, except recently I turned uh, an abandoned baby blanket into a shawl. So Aww. there we go. <laughs> so I, I have a question, just a general question for uh, all of you who crochet um, in, pres in our presence. Um, what do you recommend, like what resources have you reached for to start? I mean, do you just kind of start on a project and trust the process as you go along or did you take a class? Did you get a book? How does uh, one start? <laughs> I had a roommate who crocheted and I watched her do it and I asked her about it and she sat me down and she's like, let's get you some yarn. And, and then I made a blanket from one stitch. Wow. And it was a matter of spacing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was like, I skipped, I skipped a, a two, I skipped two stitches, crocheted three, and then I put two in a, in one. And that led to like a V shape. Okay. And it, that's where I started from. Mm -hmm. um, me, my, oh, sorry. No, you go right ahead. <laughs> my mom tried to teach me to crochet when I was in my teen years and <clears throat> I was very stuck on, there is a right way to do this and she's showing me the right way and I just can't figure it out. <laughs> I really frustrated with it and abandoned it. And then a few years later, picked it back up. I think through YouTube trying to, and, and that was so nice because through YouTube, you can see there's, okay, there's this way to hold the hook, but there's also this way, and here's a third way, and you don't have to have the string looped around the specific way that mm -hmm. mom showed. <laughs> there's multiple different ways that you can do it, and it all ends up fine in the end. Um, when I'm looking for a new thing, um, like I'm constantly struggling with the magic circle, which is a way to, <laughs> to pattern, and I always have to look to YouTube for it, no matter how many times I've done it. Um, and it's, I, I'm just more of a visual learner, so I have to see something in front of me. So, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I agree on that one. Or just visual pictures. If I, if I see it, I can replicate it. Mm -hmm. I, I'd say I started off with like, when I was really young, my grandmother crocheted and she taught us how to chain uh, but then she wasn't really in the best health, so we never learned how to do anything beyond that. <laughs> but then years later, I found 
a blog called Attic 24. It's this woman that's in England and I just loved her. Um, she has a lot of great patterns and tutorials and I don't know, I just loved her ramblings and so forth. So I kind of fell into it with that. And then doing Amigurumi was the way I think I really learned a lot about crochet. Um, and I can plug that there's a couple programs on AADL TV called <laughs> Crochet Basic Stitches that are great ways to learn. And there's like a granny square one. Granny squares are a really great beginner project to get used to holding the hook. And it's just one stitch. And then you, and you have a product because the, that's the challenge I think with learning things for a lot of people. It's, it's less about process sometimes. For, you know, when you're in the beginning, like you want to have a thing. Mm -hmm. although these are very much process oriented crafts. That's why it's like, yeah, I, I do it. And then I take it apart and I do, it's like more of the process of making them what I end up with sometimes. So, um, but yeah, granny squares, I'd say are really, really great start to crochet. Yeah. So, and like Stephanie was saying, there is more than one way to do it. You find your way, as long as you're consistent with whatever method you choose, you just keep doing that way and it works out. So crochet is very forgiving. I feel more forgiving than, than knitting. Um, so. nice. It's also yeah. extremely easy to undo everything if you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Frustrating. It's so <laughs> heartbreaking, though. Oh yeah. <laughs> the the triangle br blanket that I <clears throat> uh, showed a few episodes ago that I've been working on, um, I ended up doing like the coloring wrong. So I I was stuck on a point, and I was like, okay, I did I did the, the colors in the wrong order. So I had to undo an entire row, which I'm so slow crocheting. It took me like an hour to do that row. Mm -hmm. And just, it hurt so much. But uh, no, it was, easy. it was easy to undo that hour of work. I know, and, and it's, that's... It's, it's, you know, and you think it's a learning process, like next time, more planning, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> and with this poncho, when I had reached the row where I was supposed to start doing the lace and I realized it was five and a half inches shorter than it should be. It was either start over or I guess I'm buying more yarn and going more rows and I was seven hours in and not not gonna do it <laughs> this time. Oh wow that's really good to know. I've always thought of it as a really like precise kind of there is a right way to do this. No it's very adaptable. Okay and I will, I will have to be, uh, I'll have to guinea pig myself for the uh, basic cro crochet stitches on AADL. Uh, we'll see how that works out. <laughs> um, all right, you guys. Well, thank you so much as always for your creativity, your involvement, your effort, your amazing art and clothing and practical things. It's really wonderful and um, always a highlight of my week. So thank you, and I will see some of you guys next week. Uh, otherwise, I'll catch you on the channel, catch you on the emails, and see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. See ya. <laughs>